I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are navigating the journey. Today's journey is, it is a sad and it is a glorious journey. August 6, 8, and 9, 1945 are auspicious dates to include in your memory bank for you to hold on to, to remember. In the closing days of World War II, the world changed forever. August 6, the Americans dropped the bomb on Hiroshima. August 8, President Harry Truman signed the United Nations Charter, making America the first nation to complete the ratification process of the UN. And before the ink was dry, August 9, another exceptional day that we must remember was that the United States dropped a plutonium bomb devastating the city of Nagasaki. The Soviet Union declared war on Japan, and thus the Cold War began. So, to talk about all of this and why we are commemorating August 9 is my dear, dear friend, Joanne Tachibana. Joanne is the president of the United Nations Association of Hawaii, Hawaii chapter. Good morning, Joanne. Good morning, Marcia. Thank you for the wonderful introduction and the overview of our commemorative celebrations. Um, together, in for the more than a decade plus, uh, it's been my privilege and pleasure to work with Marsha to commemorate the often forgotten Nagasaki bombing on August 9th. You know, the community always celebrates August 6th as our sister city relationship, and then they forget <clears throat> that the Americans bombed Nagasaki. And in between that bombing, you know, August 8th, which the day that the United Nations Association across the world celebrates, is when the when President Truman did sign that United Nations Charter. You know, and we say, wow, you know, we've been through World War One, World War Two, and now we're going to have peace. We're going to gather all these wonderful nations and say, I want to work for peace, right? And then the next day, you know, um, with a they bomb Nagasaki. So it is indeed um, a very troubling time and a significant moment. And so I am, I have been a wonderful peace partner with Marsha, and we have constantly worked to bring attention to the second bombing of Nagasaki and its most significant time. And, you know, this year um, we are so privileged because um, we have been. Um, we are working with some wonderful peace partners and uh, the Honolulu Mehoji Temple on 2003, Nuwana Avenue is where we're having our commemorative celebration on August 9th at, 9, at 10 a.m. So we're hoping that you can join us. We have some wonderful projects throughout the day. We have interstate members coming, and um, our guest speaker is going to be Dr. Maya Satora Ng, who is the consultant for the Obama Foundation. We'll be joined by the Council General of, of Japan and the Nagasaki Kenjin Kai, which is the group with Hibaksha, the people that survived the bombing of Nagasaki. And we have, it's a wonderful program, which Marsha and I, our peace partners, Seeds for Peace, the Baha'is, um, the Royal Wine Chapter, um, it's in Nagasaki Kenjin Kai. And we have worked together to create this wonderful program for the public, which everybody's invited to. And, you know, we are really pleased because the Royal Hawaiian Band has annually joined us to make this such a wonderful program. So that's some highlights of that program on. Friday, August 9th. And um, Joanne yes. and I started mm -hmm. this 1990, was it? I think that <laughs> I think was, so. I think it was 1990. <laughs> it 
seems it's been a it's been a wonderful peace travel with you. <laughs> when the, oh my goodness! When yeah. the Hibakusha of Nagasaki gave the bell to mm -hmm. Honolulu, uh, Stalingrad, which is now St. Petersburg, and Manchuria, mm -hmm. the three cities that they, that the Japanese bombed. And they gave us this lovely, lovely bell, which is located in a beautiful, what was a little beautiful valley, reminiscent of, of Nagasaki. But now they built all kind of things around it, so you <laughs> lose the idea that it was a beautiful little valley. But they gave that <laughs> bell to us and money to, to maintain it. Um, right, right. So from the time that bell was dedicated until now, that's been 1990, uh, mm -hmm. we might as well, Frank Fossey was mayor. And he did not like the idea of anything from Japan. He was still fighting the war. You know. Did not want mm -hmm. anything. So he put that bell in storage, as well as the mm -hmm. Hiroshima bell in storage. Mm -hmm. So there they lie. It was a mm -hmm. major fight to get them out. And then finally, uh, city council, don't ask me, oh, what was it? Arnold Magardo was chair. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Finally, the city council said, yes, we are going to accept this uh, gift. And that's when um, Walter Ozawa began looking for a place to put it, and he thought that valley was perfect. So it was a long fight, right. a hard fight, right. but it was worth it. It's been worth every bit of it. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. At least, and don't forget to mention that the city of Nagasaki was very grateful to you and Val and how you got that award and that you the, have that symbol, right? So maybe talk a little bit about that. that that's a really the, important part of the history. Yes. And I was given, like with Val and, uh, and his wife, Frances, um, yes. the Nagasaki Peace Prize, which was fabulous. Mm -hmm. And I have a replica of the bell that's absolutely darling. And yes. And but the big prize was mm -hmm. an all expense trip to Nagasaki for both my mm -hmm. husband and me. First class air accommodations. Uh, uh -huh. the hotel was fabulous. It was don't ask me the name of the hotel, but it was a French hotel. Mm -hmm. Okay with the Japanese de a design, the Japanese interior, that, that culture, where every little detail is taken care of, every day. Right. They paid for our mm -hmm. food, our Good. transportation, and to right. be at, in Nagasaki on August 9, at that moment, is, is unlike anything I have ever experienced. Uh, the bell ringing. The, when they, you know, on August 9th, to be there, to walk around the circles, around uh, the, what do you call it, ground zero, and to mm -hmm. hear the bells, Nagasaki bells ringing throughout the city. And, and of course, there is the Nagasaki Bomb Museum, which... Yeah. It's a descent into Very hell. Catchy. It's a descent into hell. There's nothing else you can say about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And That's so good. that having that experience is what allows me to keep going to honor the mm -hmm. people of Nagasaki, to thank Absolutely. the people, the Hibakusha, for what they've done for us. Mm -hmm. We right. can't imagine. We can't imagine. 7,000 degrees! Is what the temperature yeah. was when they dropped the bomb. 7,000 degrees. And we're talking about 90 degrees, it's hot. You know, yeah. how <laughs> dare we? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, well, well, we really appreciate the fact that we, you know, that you and Val 
and Fran brought this back to Hawaii and that we have been able to commemorate with uh, interfaith clergy and peace peace partners for this number of these past few decades. And um, I think as we work toward the 2020, which is the 75th anniversary of um, Nagasaki bombing, Hiroshima, and the United Nations, you know, we would like, we're making some wonderful plans to celebrate. And the United Nations Association Hawaii is, has initiated a project the last number of years to make people aware of the sunflower and its significance. And um, you know, sunflowers became a symbol of peace and nuclear disarmament when the defense ministers in Russia and the Ukraine met on a missile base in 1996. It was celebrated by scattering sunflower seeds and planting sunflowers everywhere because unbeknownst to me before I knew this, that sunflowers remove toxins, including nuclear waste from soil and water. So this is, so we have brought um, sunflowers and awareness and seeds to, we have um, Children Youth Day for the last 20 years and um, on the first Sunday of the month, you know, Hawaii is the first to have commemorative days for children. And so we have to bring awareness. And now it's been for the Nagasaki ceremony, we are been initiating awareness of the sunflowers and passing out seeds. And we worked where we have a pleasure of uh, Surya Kumar, which has his farm in Waianae, has designated a plot so that there will be sunflowers blooming for a commemorative celebration in 2020. And we're looking forward to actually having many plots of sunflowers all over the island and perhaps the state of Hawaii so that um, people will be constantly reminded to stop nuclear war that, and please work to make the world a better place in peacefulness. So well, Joanne, for 2020. I, I yes. have a suggestion. If, okay. If we can be on good terms with the mayor. <clears throat> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Yes, let's anyway, do that. <laughs> let's do this. Okay. Now, what used to be Barber's Point was left in a mess, an absolute mess mm -hmm. when the Navy moved out. Oh, the Kalaloa area? So, there is a plot mm -hmm. of land that belongs to the city, and it is earmarked mm -hmm. for a park. But the city has done nothing. Oh. Nothing. Okay. Okay. Well, so let's, let's see if we, can, if we can get that plot of land to mm -hmm, plant mm -hmm. the well, sunflower seeds. Yeah, yeah. maybe we could, if they do a park, we can have sunflower, a sunflower garden as part of that. That would be, well, you know, uh, that would be symbolic. It would be wonderful. Let's work on that. Yes, because, and, if um, it, you know, it took them 20 years to get this little plot of land on, on Aloha Drive in Waikiki. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. who knows how? So if we start now, we might get this, you know. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that you know this is wonderful because new peace partners are are, are um, joining us and become aware. And the, recently, um, the Lemon Tree Project, which is um, the Eco Op Sustainability Day, they plant lemon trees. In schools, in 75 schools, the lemon trees give up carbon dioxide. And so we met, and then so we made a donation so that they will plant sunflowers around the lemon trees. So we're going to try to raise funds to, so that, you know, sustainable projects in schools, you know, the students, they have a curriculum and everything, and sunflowers would be an added touch. So we're, we're really looking forward to have, and you know, people will say, wow, that's so beautiful. You know, the sunflowers in Wailua recently, right? That oh, ever. it's so gorgeous, <laughs> yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, you know, so we're going to work, contact them to see if they would be a sustainable partner, you know. And So, so they have the know-how. It's so exciting. It's yeah, so they exciting. have the know-how. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to, to it, it's really exciting. And Absolutely. So. so maybe with Ikaika being the chair of the council yes. and the mayor, yes. both of whom and term out <laughs> next year, maybe this could be their last, mm -hmm. This their going away present. 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> absolutely. And, uh, you know, yeah. And then, so I'm hoping, looking forward to hope the council chair Anderson will be able to even join us uh, on this August 9th, you know, and uh, I am so excited. I, I think um, we've worked so hard and there's been, and there's more awareness in the last, this last year, this year, right? So uh, I really, you know, Marcia, no, I just am so grateful that well, we have continued yes. this work. Well, listen, Joanne, we need to take a break yes. and we will be back in 60 okay, sure. seconds. And let's talk about where mm -hmm. we go from here. Okay? Okay. Thank you. All righty. Aloha. I'm Stan Osterman, Stan the Energy Man, every Friday here on Think Tech Hawaii. If you're really interested in finding out what's going on in energy, especially here in Hawaii, but also all the way around the world, and especially if it has to do with hydrogen, look into Stan the Energy Man every Friday, 12 o'clock, Think Tech Hawaii. Be there. Aloha. Aloha, I'm Keisha King, host of At the Crossroads, where we have conversations that are real and relevant. We have spoken with community leaders from right here locally in Hawaii and all around the world. Won't you join us on thinktechhawaii.com or on YouTube on the Think Tech Hawaii channel. Our conversations are real, relevant, and lots of fun. I'll see you at the crossroads. Aloha. Aloha. I'm Marcia Joyner, and we are back. We are navigating the journey, <laughs> the journey through the bombing of Nagasaki. And needless to say, over the years, I have learned so much, Joanne and I. Joanne, mm -hmm. I guess. Mm -hmm. the, the one thing that I just discovered, but you told me more mm -hmm. about it, was the Constitution mm -hmm. that, right. that was written after the war, and by, at first by the Japanese, and then, of course, the American woman that worked for um, MacArthur really wrote the final draft, which I think was just a fabulous document. Um, mm -hmm. Because yeah, it, 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 mm -hmm. it replaced the Menji Constitution of 1889. Can you believe that? Mm -hmm. So what do you, what do you know right. about it? Right. Well, I... Let's see. Yeah. It was so significant that um, you know the Americans really encouraged the Japanese to make sure that there'd be no more war. They were they were so aggressive, right? They were brutal to the countries they overtook, you know, China, Burma, and everything, right? So, um, so that they they would never again raise arms against any other nation, right? So I really felt that the it was very significant that. Um, the Constitution said that you would renounce war and exercise, take out the concept of a war from all people. And so they, they started the reign of peace, right? And May 3rd, 1947, the Japanese post-war Constitution went into effect. A progressive Constitution granted universal suffrage, which is, like, amazing, right? Because yes. <laughs> not too many places... <laughs> women voting, you know, America fought so hard. I mean, people don't realize how many women do not have the opportunity to vote. It took a long time for many uh, colleges in uh, third world countries to even accept that yes. some women should be able to vote, right? Mm -hmm. And at the same time, the Constitution took away the power of the Emperor Hirohito. Uh, but he became a very symbolic, you know, rather than like the sun god but he became a symbolic power for the people to have an emblem, you know? And they had a Bill of Rights. It's an abolished peerage, outlawed Japanese right to make war, okay, which is, like, really significant. Article 9 forbade the Japanese ever to wage war again, right? And there was even, like, political parties that um, based the premise on peace, right? So. Uh, it was, you know, when you look back at the history, it was so significant, right? And um, 
the most important reform carried out, carried out by the American occupation was the establishment of the new constitution. And General MacArthur, who really worked hard to rebuild Japan after the devastation of the bombings, even in Tokyo, um, Hiroshima and Nagasaki, right? He gave up much of his authority to the Japanese government, which many people are not aware of what, what role he played in making, empowering the Japanese back after being so, so devastated, you yeah? know? And then um, in September 1951, the United States and 48 other nations signed a formal peace treaty with Japan. And on April 28, 1952, the treaty went into effect, and Japan assumed full sovereignty as the Allied occupation came to an end. And General MacArthur was a visionary and a peacemaker, unbeknownst to so many. And I was very touched by reading the history of his contribution to not have the emperor um, um, possessed, you know, um, executed as a symbol of. You know, we have destroyed Japan forever. Yes. yes. And and um, I, I have to tell you, you know, though the, that my husband yeah, yeah. was in the mm -hmm. occupation of Japan. Oh, and, wow. Yeah, well, he's quite young at the time, early stages of his, <laughs> early stages of being yes. in the Navy. Yeah, like, like, and like our so, governor. <laughs> yes, very early. And, however, when we went back to, mm -hmm. at the, as guests of the Japanese, of Nagasaki, he danced the, with the, I, he turned into that sailor again. <laughs> he sang the Japanese songs. He danced with the, the, all the ladies. It was unbelievable how he rolled back all those years. And because he spoke so highly of being in Japan in 1952, mm -hmm. you know, and in the occupation, and to see it right. then, see the rubble. And then to see it right, right, when right. we went back, it's unbelievable. And well, you know him to watch this big guy turn into this young sailor. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes, and it, you know, the peace is not so easy to accomplish. And but I think that um, America did under MacArthur really empowered Japan to become a nation of friendships, right? So, and then the United Nations has the UNESCO um, and says that since war begins in the minds of men, it is in the minds of men that the sense of peace must be constructed. And that's a message that we really try to empower young people to be aware, you know, well, like the, you like know, the mm -hmm. when, when we think of this volunteer military that we have now, and it's only 1% mm -hmm. mm -hmm. of the Americans that, are, that volunteer. So, right. <laughs> yeah. you know, while America loves war, you watch all of the stuff mm -hmm. that's on television and the war games they yeah. play and all that. But when it comes to real... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm fighting, real war, mm -hmm. you see how they right. have pulled back from that, I think, I hope. I hope. <laughs> I hope. <laughs> I hope. We, we hope. We hope. We hope. Yeah. But listen, Joanne, tell us more about mm -hmm. what we can expect on August 9. First of all, where is the temple? It's such a beautiful, absolutely gorgeous yeah. temple. Where, where is it? Yeah. Okay. Um, the Hongo Mihoji Temple. Um, they actually have a, they call themselves a peace temple. They're located at the New Uwanu. It's, that's the correct side. It's 2003 New Uwanu Avenue. And Reverend Akamasu Yamamura is a, a, a humble and Buddhist priest with a very peacemaking heart. And, you know, I've been to many. He's an awesome opera singer. And that's how we met him as he sang. Ave Maria, which he will be doing a Buddhist prayer for us, and he will also 
be gracing us with Ave Maria as part of our special program on August 9th, this year. This year. And, um, yes, yes, yes. And so we hope you can join us. You, and um, as you mentioned earlier, Dr. Maya Sator Ng, for the first time, will be joining us and will be welcoming up a precious audience to the to the significant ceremony. And um, we'll be joined by other interstate clergy that we have the Hongpa Hongganji and we have the Baha'i and we have a Christian message from the St. Andrew Cathedral. We'll also have, um, we're looking, we've invited um, from the Muslim community and the Jewish community. So we and we have peacemakers from Seeds for Peace, the United Nations Association. Um, we're so looking forward to having people be more aware of these commemorations because it's a part of history and how we can project for the future, future to no more wars and no more tunnel bombs, right? So that's kind of the message we want young people to be engaged in for the future, right? Well, we want also, as we talk about mm -hmm. the bells of Nagasaki, and Absolutely. one of the things I'd like to leave with our audience mm -hmm. yes, and is that the bells were the Angelus, which, of course, if you're Catholic, you understand that the bells are rung three mm -hmm. times a day. And they were in the cathedral. At the time of the bombing, the, mm -hmm. the bells were, rung, were ringing and they were bombed. And one bell remained. And the story goes that the theory is that the bells should ring every day until the end of time. So we tried very hard to ring bells yes. until the end of time, or at least our time. <laughs> so, tell <Our> us, time. <laughs> yeah. so tell us, Joanne, um, how how can we how can everybody participate? It's open to the public, and can they call you? The public, and can they call you? Absolutely, the number. Yeah. Yes, they can. For more information, we'd be so delighted to hear from you. Um, yes, my number. I think we'll list it eight zero eight three eight seven seven two seven one. Okay. Say it again. One more. Eight zero eight three eight seven seven two seven one. Come one, come all. Join a peacemaking celebration. Thank you. I think we have less than a minute left, but there's a gentleman mm -hmm. that is filming because he's telling the story of the Bakshaw from yes. Tok from Hiroshima yes. and Nagasaki. So, right. um, yes, Hunter is making a film called Sakura and Pearl, and he will be interviewing um, the Nagasaki Kinjin Kai members to, and he will also be preparing that film documentary in December. I'm guessing around December 7th, around the commemoration of Pearl Harbor. So thank you for the reminder, because he will be there to interview um, well, and put, and put this as part of the documentary film. Thank you. Thank you so much, Joanne. And as always, my love to you. And thank you, audience, and we'll see you next time. Thank you.